today my speech is about persuading you I'm, guys. I'm going to ask you to start again. Okay. okay. I'll give you a free pass on this one. Now listen to what I'm saying. I want you to start by introducing yourself. Okay. That way I make sure I know I'm grading the right person. Okay. okay. The next thing is, you want to start with an attention device. You do not want to start with, today I'm going to speak about, or my speech is going to be about. You want to start with an attention device. Okay. So if you have an attention device, start there, not with the topic. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So we'll start over. All right. My name is Carol Castillo. Um, so I have so many friends that make seven twenty-five an hour, and they do not make sufficient enough of money to actually pay for the bills and the worst part of all they live from paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. Um, they cannot save for their future nor to even succeed in life to buy a house or actually move on from the projects or even have money to have for their <coughs> children's future. Also it's hard for them to buy clothes, feed themselves and pay their bills which are skyrocketing even more day by day. And the worst part of all, the pay remains the same, but everything else gets higher. So, um, back in 1997, President Clinton and the Democratic Party fought for us to have a raise, figuring it will benefit those who live in poverty to at least be above the line average of being poor. It was a step to decreasing poverty. They felt that raising the minimum wage, while at least be in pace with the cost of living. To me, they, they need to raise it again for us to keep going with the same pace with the cost of living because more and more people are being laid off and there's no more funds as to qualify for this, like food stamps or any public assistance. A lot of people is depending on those checks, making our government not having enough funds in the bank. Also, family with low income but also, those who make the minimum wage, they see about $12,000 a year, making them, like I said earlier, depending on public assistance. As well as that, there's only certain requirements by the United States Department of Agriculture who can be eligible for those type of programs. So for example, personally, I make eight twenty-five. dollars I do not qualify for cash assistance from my food stamps. I only qualify for food stamps as well as I could qualify for welfare, but they said I make too much money to pay my rent and my bills. So it doesn't balance out how can I live from paycheck to paycheck. So it's really hard and tough today. President Clinton at the time saw poverty and he felt that they, us people who live in poverty, we do everything, but we see no increase or any type of help. Now I'm going to provide some vital information as to why we should raise the minimum wage. Was it right there? Sorry. So raising the minimum wage actually helps the purpose of decreasing poverty. Proponents like the Democrats and President Clinton at the time have proven, economics have proven to decrease poverty. It's a way of survival for the Americans to succeed and live satisfactory with themselves. Um, also, here on the slide, I put um, Americans with the need of a rise. Also, at the time of 1997, 515 was the actual minimum wage and only made about 10, 7, 12 a year before taxes. Also, they had the cost, the cost of housing have raised by 33%, making it more expensive than anyone can actually afford. Also, the cost of education, books, and supplies was jumped, and I'm pretty sure you guys heard that the CUNY tuition actually is going to be raised by $300 for next semester. And that's actually a big issue for those who come out of pocket to pay for their education. They won't be able to pay for it. Unlike those who receive financial aid and the government help, it's okay. They still get their education paid for. But for those who actually work hard to get an education, they won't be able to at least participate for next summer for school. Food costs have also increased by 28% as well as child care. I pay child care, for instance, and it has gone up. And it's gone from $20 to $60 a month. Like I said, mentioned earlier, I don't make enough money to actually make my whole paycheck to fit everything. 
health care costs have actually increased as well. It's the average about eleven thousand dollars, four hundred eighty dollars a year. And like mentioned earlier above, people who make the minimum wage was ten seven twelve at the time. So health care costs more than what you actually make in a year. The increase on the wage also will cut back public assistance as well as people using it. It'll hard to see. Uh, also, for example, on a website that I found, raiseminimumwage.org explains higher wage will actually provide a stimulus to local and regional economies because of higher consumer spending. The more you spend, supposedly the money will rotate and it will be flexible to the government. Also, low-income workers will be less dependent on the government. It will reduce the state government and federal government expenses on public assisting benefiting the community. Now that we know the positive outcome for families at home, now we can we look at the business, businesses that where our opponents come in and they oppose for rising the minimum wage because they feel that raising the minimum wage will affect businesses in order to not have enough money and some businesses will go down. Um, one of the <coughs> now that you know the positive outcome, there was somebody else who I found online named Gerard Bernstein who talked about her expert of minimum wage and its effect on small businesses. The article actually showed in one of her figures how some states higher than the federal minimum wage had faster growth in companies. Um, this actually shows that from 1998 to 2001, the number of small businesses establishments grew twice quicker and higher than the minimum wage. Also, the employment grew because the, the companies were expanding even more, therefore more employment was able to give in to people who needed a job. By this chart, we can also see um, the opportunity for people to work and actually have some type of employment, making them higher than the below average of poverty. Now, given some of the reasons why we have positive proponents in raising the minimum wage, now we can look at how it would benefit us as a nation. Now here I have some pointers of how people would it would benefit. 5.6 million workers actually, which is 4% of the workforce, would benefit directly. 7.4 million workers will benefit the resulting the rise the rises. And some of us will be women as well as parents, as well as Hispanic Americans, as well it would benefit African Americans. It helps also reduce the gap between the poor and the wealthy in America. It will help the poor from moving up from poverty and be able to support themselves. Um, in this slide, like I said earlier, the slideshow presents the percentage and who benefits the minimum wage, the, minimum, the raise of minimum wage. In conclusion, minimum wage has been an important issue for over 65 years. It's how the, the nation values work and how the minimum wage protects us from being exploited and abused at work. It also has an equalizer and low wage workers market where workers have little bargaining power. All these reasons why policy makes at both state and federal level to ensure the minimum wage continues to be effective for the, American, for the working American. Okay.